Thanks for joining me here at Astrophotography Japan. The SV-225 from Zviboni is a popular alt-as manual mount for visual astronomy. I reviewed it in episode 24 and recently again in episode 38 where I described how to reset and repair the mount for better performance. This is a brief follow-up to the prior video. In this video, I will describe for you a convenient little tool that I made, which I now carry with me in the field for tuning up the mount on the spot if adjustments are needed. Here is that tool. It is basically a customized little fixed spacing spanner wrench device constructed from a hardwood dowel and stainless steel nails with tips that are spaced exactly right for adjusting the brass worm gear housing on both the altitude and azimuth drives of the mount. If you recall from the previous video, when you remove the cover plates of the drive cores, as you see here, uh, this specifically is the azimuth unit, the main rotational drive is a large circular gear support that is incrementally turned by a brass worm gear device located adjacent to it, such that the teeth of each of these gears are interconnected. The manual rotation of the brass worm gear provides a force to slowly spin the large circular gear and hence move the telescope in one direction or the other, left or right for the azimuth mechanism, and up or down for the altitude mechanism. As I showed in the previous reset and repair video, you do not need to take apart the core of the SV-225 mount to make the corrective adjustments. The brass component you see here is the worm gear housing of the azimuth drive. As you know, there are protruding connections on either side where you attach the hand control rods for providing rotation and hence sky navigation. But if you look closely at the gear housing, you can see that the worm gear brass housing is intentionally asymmetric in design. And on each side of the protrusions, there are little indentations separated by nine millimeters of spacing and made for spanner wrench tips so that you can spin the housing to force the two gear mechanisms back into closer contact. This is how you can tune up both the altitude and azimuth gear performance. It essentially is a mechanical tune-up, restoring the mount to original factory performance. However, the brass worm gear housing is designed to be securely held in place by two Allen screws that provide frictional contact from the side direction. These are the two Allen screw holes here. You will need a M2 or 2 millimeter Allen key to loosen and tighten these screws. Basically, these are the problem screws that loosen over time, allowing the brass worm gear housing to slip out of close alignment. Unfortunately, on the altitude base, to access these screws, you will need to remove the Vixen clamp since it blocks these holes. But that is just a simple matter as shown here. So, for resetting the gear contacts, you first need to loosen one of the Allen screws on one side, then using a spanner device, rotate the brass worm gear housing in a way to achieve gear teeth contact. You will feel the resistance when the metal gears connect. And then tighten the Allen screw back up again to hold that position. If necessary, repeat this on the other side. It is simple and quick and easy if you have the right tool. However, carrying around an adjustable spanner wrench is a bit troublesome, especially if you need to transport your telescope and rig to a park or open field somewhere for viewing. Hence, to overcome these issues, I created this crude fixed spanner device. I also conveniently added a little holder for the proper sized 2 mm Allen key for manipulating the tension screws as well. There is no rocket science here. The only difficult part was pre-drilling straight aligned holes in the top dowel piece from end to end. This was challenging because I do not own a vertical mechanical drill press, so I had to freestyle it using a simple hand drill, but I accomplished it on the first try regardless. 
And by the way, I made one mistake, which actually turned out to be fortuitous. I figured it would be good to minimize the protrusion distance of the nails on the working end to minimize any flexure or instability, but I accidentally used nails that were a bit too short. The nail tips did not reach the adjustment holes because the brass protrusion of the worm gear was contacting the wooden dowel between the nails and preventing them from reaching the spanner holes. No matter, however, because I decided to drill out some wood from between the protruding nails, making a little pocket or hole to accommodate the brass protrusion. This actually turned out to be a bonus because the insertion of the brass protrusion into the hole between the nails actually provided a sturdy rotational axis that made it easier to rotate the worm gear housing without slippage. Yeah, admittedly it looks very crude, but it cost only a few dollars to make it, it was easy to construct, and it works wonderfully well and I can carry it with me every time I take out the SV225 mount in case it needs an unexpected quick tune-up. Now I know what you're thinking. This could probably be better designed and improved upon by 3D printing. Indeed, I agree, assuming one uses plastic strong enough to hold the nail securely at 9mm spacing. Go for it. Well, that's it. I just wanted to share this little equipment tip to other users of the Zerboni SV225 mount. I hope you found the idea useful, because if you own a mount, sooner or later you will definitely need to make adjustments. Wishing you clear skies. In Yokohama, Japan, I'm JP Astro Guy. My name is Paul Cheesegel, and you have been watching Astrophotography Japan. Thank you for your interest and support.